Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. So in the next few videos, we're going to be talking about classes, objects, and operator overloading. So the syntax to create a class is you just type in the class and then you type in your class name. In this case, we're going to make a student class. So for now, I'm gonna use uh, the keyword pass so that it doesn't throw an error. Basically, if you use pass, it's just saying, hold it for now, don't throw an error, and then we'll come back and fill it in with code. The coding paradigm for classes in Python is you want to always make it in camel case. So snake case is what we've been using for function names and variables. So for instance, maybe we have a function add two numbers. There you go. That's where we use a snake case. It's basically the underscore to separate two or more words. Uh, with classes, you want to use camel case. So for instance, student is a single word, but maybe you have another class. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be making a credit card class. So we would call it credit card instead of credit card. Okay, so remember, you should always use camel case when making classes. So why is it important to use classes? Well, classes represent entities where you have your standard field and attributes. So you have your fields and attributes and you have your behavior. And uh, these are your methods, your class functions. So let's say I wanted to uh, have a list of student names and just student information. Let's just say name and age. Maybe you would use a list and probably just keep everything in the list. So maybe my name is Kenny, 23, and maybe uh, Bob and 15. You know, with two pieces of information, this is uh, pretty simple, right? You don't really need more than a list. But if you want something more complicated, what if uh, we wanted to have the student to be associated with their list of classes? What if uh, we want to add a student ID? These type of things you might want to consider when you're designing your student class. So instead of doing it this way, we're going to create a student class and every class needs a constructor. So the way you write your constructor is, you type in underscore in it. So th this is two underscore and then in it, in it stands for initialize and then two underscore after, and then you pass in self. And the reason you pass in self is self is basically a reference to the student class. Right now we just have an empty constructor, but let's uh, add in a name and age parameter. And then we have our attributes where in Python, we put them inside the constructor. So we'll say self.name is equal to name and self.age is equal to age. So self is basically saying the student, so it's basically student.name is going to be assigned the name parameter and then student.age is going to be this age parameter. If you did not have this self, you are basically saying take this name parameter and set it to itself. So it's confusing. So if you have an attribute or a field with the same name as a parameter, using self basically distinguishes the two. Now, whenever we create a student object, let's say s1 is equal to student, we have to check to see if there are parameters. So we have our name and age parameter. So I'm just gonna use the one from before, Kenny and 23. And then when we pass in Kenny and 23, what gets called is this constructor. So it's basically saying, uh, let's create a student object, pass in Kenny for the name. So self.name is now Kenny and pass in 23 for the age. And then now if I were to print s1.name and comma s1.age, let's see what happens we get Kenny and 23, okay? So just to clarify, an object is an instance of a class. Another thing we can do is we can add a default parameter. So let's say age, uh, let's say age is not important in this case. Let's say we assume that anyone entering college is probably 18, okay? So now if I run this code, we can see it's still Kenny 23. Why is that? Age by default was 18. If I pass in a parameter for age 23, it will first say, Okay, age is 18, reassign it so that age is 23 now. That's basically what happens. So if I took away this parameter, 23, and just passed in Kenny, let's run it, we get Kenny 18, okay? So what happens instead of Kenny, I pass in an integer, let's say 25. What will happen? Uh, let's see, we get 25, 18. So what happened? Basically, when you pass in a parameter, Python does not consider the typing. So even though we expect name to be a string type and age to be an integer, when we pass in 25, it goes from left to right. So it's saying name, you set it to 25, age, well, no parameters pass, so we use the default parameter 18. So actually, the student one name is actually 25 and the age is 18. So that's something you wanna be careful with. Now, another thing is because it goes from left to right, according to your parameters, I can't just have a, a name let's say let's use anonymous as the default name. I can't do this because 
as soon as I pass in 25, it's not going to go to age, it's going to go to name, right? Because it's the leftmost parameter. That's why you see this error. If you have a left parameter with a default value, every parameter to the right of it, you have to assign a default value. So age, you need to assign a default value. So let's assign it 18. And now if I run our code, you can still see it's still 25 and 18, because again, you go from left to right, 25 is being passed for name. And if I took away 25 and run a uh, runner code, we get a non 18. So basically I didn't pass in any parameters. So we just stick with both the default parameters. Okay. So that's how you use uh, default parameters in your constructor. All right. Let's say we want to add more behaviors to a student because a student is more than just a name and age. They have a list of courses. So we're just going to uh, default this to an empty list. We don't need a student to pass in a list. By default, whenever we create a student object, we just give them an empty list representing a list of courses. And in this case, we're just going to put in a course ID. So maybe CS 1114 or CS 1134. This will be in the form of strings. So we're just going to have a list of strings for the courses. Now, what we can do is we can say s1.courses.append, right? Because we can access the fields and we can append uh, CS 1134. And then we can print s1.courses on our code, we see that now the student has CS 1134 in their course list. However, you do not want to do it this way because typically when we write classes, you want to keep the data members, you want to keep these fields hidden in a way that we should not expect the user to directly access them. So instead of doing that, we should add a method. So we will say add course. And then we'll add a course parameter. And we'll say self.courses.append course. So uh, what happened here? Oh, we should pass in self. Don't forget to pass in self. So we have uh, s1.courses. So instead of doing s1.courses.append, we're just going to say s1.add course. And then if we save and run, we get the same behavior. Now, another thing you might want to consider is what happens if the student adds a course that they're already taking? Uh, normally, actually, you do not enroll in two of the same exact courses, right? So in this case, we'll check if self dot courses. Uh, if, so if course uh, in self dot courses, maybe we can raise an exception. So this is how you would raise a basic error and say course uh, student already enrolled. So here's your error message. So let's run our code. And we see that we only enrolled in one course. If I do this again and run it, we get uh, an error. So we have an exception student already enrolled. Okay. So notice that the courses don't get printed. So when we're programming, uh, you might want to consider when to use an exception. In this case, maybe you don't want to use exception because you know, if you're already enrolled, maybe you have a, another list of courses that you want to enroll in. For instance, I want to say S1 that course, uh, CS 1114 or S1 dot add course uh, CS uh, 2124. I want to add these two other courses, but because I have an error, my program ends. So perhaps instead of uh, adding an exception, uh, maybe you just do the opposite. So if course not in self dot courses, you can just add it yourself. So basically it's saying if the course is not in the course list, you just add it. Otherwise, do nothing. Or alternatively, instead of uh, doing it this way, we can just print the message and just do else add the course. So if the course is already in self courses, just print the student is already enrolled. Otherwise, you just append the course. So basically enroll the student. OK, that's uh, basically it for our uh, methods. Uh, another thing we can do is add uh, a way to display the student information. So actually, let's run this to make sure everything's OK. So CS 1134. So student already enrolled. So it happened when we tried to enroll a second time. And then let's just print the courses here. OK, we have three courses. Now, what happens if we try to print S1, right? The student itself, we run it. We get student is in this memory location. When we print student, we did not define uh, how we should display the student. So by default, it will always display the class type. So in this case, it's a student type and then it's memory uh, address location. So the way you want to override that is add a dunder method called string. So this is a dunder method. 
thunder stands for double underscore. Formally, we call this operator overloading. So this is the string operator. And basically, what this allows us to do is, let's just for now return self.name plus space plus self. Um, what was the other parameter? Age. Actually, be careful here. We want to convert the age to a string. So basically, what this parameter does is, uh, sorry, what this operator does is, it allows us to convert our student object to a string object. So this is a string representation. So basically, now if we run our code, we can see it's no longer this memory address location. Instead, we get the name anon18. If I passed in Kenny23, we get Kenny23. Okay, so that's how you would override printing because printing is always going to request the string representation of uh, the object. Another thing I want to do is uh, define a wrapper. So this is basically short for representation, and this is used in the terminal. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to return a uh, string of self. Okay. So basically, when you call string of self, remember, this operator allows us to convert the object to a string. And the way we do that is you just pass it into a string with the parentheses. So in this case, we pass in self. Remember, self represents the student. So we're passing in student into a string. All right. And then uh, let me show you the difference between the wrapper and string. So wrapper is for the console. So let's say uh, we're using uh, Python. So let's say we have a string uh, ABC. If I print X, so that would be the string representation of the string object. But it's wrapper representation. So this second one is different in that if I type in X, the variable again, we get the quotation mark. So this is the actual representation of the object. Okay, so when you print, it calls a string. And then if you just type it in into the terminal, you get the representation instead. So that's the difference. And here we, uh, we're we not going to worry about that because all we care is what it looks like when we print. Yeah, so maybe uh, we want to add more detail. So let's just quickly do that name and then add the next line character and then plus H and then plus courses. So actually, uh, let's combine this. And then we want to take the string representation of the courses because it's a list uh, object. So we run it now. We get name is Kenny, age is 23, courses. Here's our list of courses. Okay. So uh, that's the basics of classes and the constructor methods, right? We have our fields here and we have our string and wrapper operators that allows us to call print. Okay. So uh, that's all for today. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oops, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention earlier. Um, so with the default parameters, uh, if you want to specify a parameter for age, but not the name, what you can do is you can just type in the parameter name, which is age and just type in age equal 23. So if we run this, we can now see that anon is the name and 23 is the age. Okay, so that's uh, just something I want to clarify that if you have all default parameters, you can choose which ones to change.